welcome to It's an Inside Job Bite Size Fridays, your weekly dose of resilience, optimism, and well being to get you ready for the weekend. Now, each week, I'll bring you insightful tips and uplifting stories to help you navigate life's challenges and embrace a more positive mindset. And so, with that said, let's slip into the stream. Well, welcome back, folks, to another Bite Size Friday. This week's episode is taken from the full conversation with hostage negotiator J. Paul Nadeau. Now, this was originally aired in Season 5, Episode 1. So in today's short clip, we're going to dive into a powerful story of resilience and purpose. Now, Nadeau, he shares a story from a troubled childhood marked by violence to a career dedicated to protecting others as a police officer. He reveals how these early adversities shaped his path, leading him to roles as a detective, hostage negotiator, and international peacekeeper. So in this episode, Paul offers deep insights into human behavior, crisis management, and the transformative power of narrative in our lives. This is an inspiring conversation that blends both personal history with professional wisdom. So without further ado, let's slip into the stream. You know, I I start this story off by saying that I was raised in a home with a very disturbed and violent uh, alcoholic father. And uh, my dad had two sides to him. He was Jekyll and he was Hyde. Uh, He had a dark side to him and he had a very charismatic side to him. The dark side that he took out on his children, on his wife, um, had a lot of effect on me because I was beaten regularly um, and severely beaten and put through some pretty disturbing things. I got like I saw animals being killed in front of me. I was taken to uh, a slaughterhouse when I was seven years old. Uh, There was a number of other things that I don't want to get into, but Mm. it really for a kid, uh, it left uh, It left my soul uh, really taxed. And I I remember after a beating when I was seven years old, I remember looking up at my dad and saying to myself, when I grow older, I'm going to become a policeman so I can arrest you. I wanted to stop my dad from doing that to me, to my brothers um, and sisters and to my mom. And I couldn't be the protector back then. And as I grew older, my father uh, didn't give me the opportunity to arrest him. He actually uh, took his own life when I was 17. And uh, he shot himself with the same rifle that he shot Santa Claus with when I was eight. And um, I remember just uh, going through the police academy, uh, just following my dream and becoming that policeman, because by then, I wanted to protect others from experiencing the same thing that I had done. Now, in every person's life, I mean, I'm not the only one with this kind of story, Jason. A lot of people have it. But what I discovered is at a very very early age, I really had to take care of myself because my mother, beautiful angel that she was, didn't have the time to really take care of five children. And she also had to take care of a number of people who were living in our basement. These were people who were renting rooms that my father wanted income from. And so she had very little time for her children, but it did for me. um, It taught me to take care of myself at a very young age, to learn how to sell myself and learn how to communicate with adults when I was looking for a job at the age of 12 and 13. And I got good at it. And I realized that once I had joined the police department, that my ability to connect with people and to really sell myself, but sell my ideas to people connected, it it made a difference in people's lives. And I went on to become a detective. I thought this is what I set out to do. And I, I put my heart and my soul into becoming the detective and I became the detective Then I went into the the sexual assault and child abuse unit, we, uh, the SVU, as a lot of people refer to it, and really connected with the victims of crime and was able to get them to open up. And an opportunity came across my desk to uh, put in my name to become a hostage negotiator. And I thought, you know what, that's a cool job. And I think I could do that. And the moment I told my boss, he says, geez, Nadeau, Yes, of course you can. And uh, so I went out and I I applied for it. And uh, being from Canada, Jason, you would know, but maybe perhaps some of your listeners wouldn't. We have a federal police agency, the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in Canada. 
And they have to approve and sign off on hostage negotiators because not everyone can be a hostage negotiator for a number of different reasons. And I went through their tests. Uh, I went through a number of different scenarios with them, interviews, and then they, they sealed it. They said, yes, we're welcoming you into the program. And then several months later, after I learned how to become a hostage negotiator, I became one. Uh, the international peacekeeping happened, uh, yeah, it happened a little bit later during the Iraq war. And I remember our one of our inspectors, a really beautiful man, he, uh, he announced that we had opportunities to join the United Nations and uh, keep the peace across the world. And there were a number of different countries that were looking for peacekeepers, and Jordan was one of them. And the Iraqi police cadets, like the Iraqi police, mm -hmm. their country, Iraq, was falling apart, and they were, they were at war. And they were getting as many police officers as they possibly could to join the police department. And uh, I saw an opportunity there to teach Iraqi police cadets, and that's how I joined. In your career, you know, you've been involved, obviously, with victims of crime, perpetrators. What are some of the key insights about human behavior, especially in high-stress situations like hostages, um, hostage takings and sort of terrorist attacks that you've learned over the years? Yeah, one of the things that I've learned is that we all respond to what happens to us uh, quite differently. And this is based on our backgrounds. This is based on our experiences. But when a person's liberty, when their power and control has been taken from them, people tend to respond in, in one of two ways. Uh, one way is that they are a complete victim, that uh, they blame themselves oftentimes for what's happened to them or they're just, they're going to obey no matter what the circumstances are. In the taking of a hostage, we can understand it, that we're all going to suffer from a great deal of stress and uncertainty. And some people are going to handle it much better than others. And they're going to look for the silver lining, so to speak, is like, hey, this won't last forever. I've got to be optimistic. I've got to look forward to it. Yes, I'm going to, I'm going to have to listen to what they're saying, their commands, and I'm under their control. I got it. But everything's going to be okay. Whereas others don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, their, their systems are just so severely attacked that they lose all ability to focus, to think, to, uh, to rationalize. Uh, and I understand it because recently, as we're doing this podcast, Jason, uh, for if this is played in a few years from now, right now what's happening in the Middle East is that there is a war that has broken out between Hamas and Israel. And I've been on the news uh, a few times to talk about the state of the hostages and, and what we could expect from this. And again, it comes down to the negotiation, but more specifically to your question, Jason, uh, people handle stress and uh, the unexpected in many different ways. Uh, some people lose complete control, whereas others, they retain control uh, of themselves, but not their circumstances, if that makes sense. No, I understand. So it sounds like, from, from my experience, because we, we talk a lot on this podcast about equanimity and resilience, and that these kind of things are not just given to us. It's something we have to go through the crucible to to earn through ex experience. And hopefully we never have to experience being a hostage. But it's interesting what you're saying that how there are different responses to an identical situation. So would you say some part of it comes down to the narrative we assign to the situation, the meaning we give to the situation, or how we relate to the situation. I don't know if you can speak to that that um, that layering of it. Oh, I certainly can, Jason, and it's an excellent question because it really does come down to the narrative that we tell ourselves. Uh, when we talk about the taking of hostages by a physical entity, by mm -hmm. hostage takers, as is the circumstance right now, Hamas taking hostages, mm -hmm. that is one thing. But I want to spin it a little bit and talk about you and I and each and every one of your listeners. We can take ourselves hostage. We can actually take ourselves hostage. What does it mean to be taken hostage? 
it means that your your freedom of choice, your actions, your movements, um, what you do and what you say are severely controlled by an outside source. But when we take ourselves, our own selves hostage, we are taking this person, my person, hostage by my narrative, mm-hmm. not by anybody else. Nobody has control over it. But if I give in to my hostage thoughts, for example, you can't possibly do this, Paul. There's no way you can do that. That's a narrative that so many people go through. I'm looking for a job. Hey, come on, come on. What are you talking about? You're looking for that job? Nobody's ever going to hire you. Why would you even try? Or I'm looking to ask this person out for a date. Oh, I'm going to ask her out or I'm going to ask him out. And then all of a sudden the narrative comes in and says, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Have you looked at yourself? There's no way that you're going to be able to score a date with this person. You're just not that person. You can't do it. And this is the essence of taking yourself hostage by the narrative that you choose to accept. If you give in to the hostage taker, if you give in complete control to the hostage taker, you are as much a prisoner as those people being held by Hamas today is that we can be held hostage by ourselves, meaning that we won't move forward with our dreams, with our thoughts, with our our um, our goals mm-hmm. and aspirations, because we're holding ourselves hostage to a narrative that doesn't serve us. As opposed to saying, I can't, we have to say, I can and I will. And what must I do to get to where I want to be? It is very much, Jason, about the narrative that we give ourselves that voice in our head sounds just like us. I don't know if you've experienced it. I'm sure you have. I I know everybody has. Mm, Everybody has. I talked about that with Jim, our mutual friend, Jim, and I have had this discussion as well because I spoke about it um, in my my first book. But it is really about that narrative that we choose to give into. And it's a choice. A lot of people don't realize that they have the choice of changing the narrative, which is so powerful when you think about it. What? I don't have to give in to the hostage taker myself, just as you don't have to give in to the hostage taker. Uh, uh, Victor Frankl uh, said it beautifully. Victor Frankl um, is a uh, was a neurologist, and uh, he was taken hostage um, because he was Jewish uh, and during the Second World War. And he made observations from inside the um, the concentration camp in which he said that everyone, anyone can take away everything but one thing, our power to choose, our power to choose our own uh, destinies. Nobody can take that away from us. And so if you are held hostage as he was, it was a choice of his not to give up hope, not to believe in the faith that he had. And that, in that way, his hostage takers didn't have complete control over him. He always held on to the hope and the faith that he had. And that's just a beautiful thing. We can control ourselves. If you want more, why not go back and listen to the original full conversation with my guest? You will find the link in the episode in the show notes. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll be back next week with my long form conversational episodes on Monday and the latest Bite Sides episode on Friday and have yourself a relaxing and rejuvenating weekend.